That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. And for today's Daily Dose of Stupid, I don't know how many of you have heard about this, but the Supreme Court has come down with a pretty big decision, and the only reaction that I think is fitting for this decision is, hey, Robert's gonna Roberts. And it has become an unfortunate pattern on the Supreme Court that Justice John Roberts, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, has become really somebody that... uh tends to side with the liberal justices on pretty much everything and has basically dared the American people to try to stop the constant progressive agenda here, which has been very baffling and surprising to me because even though, yes, Roberts will occasionally screw you, especially with something like the Obamacare thing, at least in the past, Roberts did have a pretty conservative track record and normally it was Anthony Kennedy that was the swing vote. Now it's like the default is that Roberts is going to be the swing vote, and he's normally going to rule with the liberals. He, he's quickly becoming just the fifth liberal justice, which has been really astounding, because it, at least with Justice Kennedy, it was a coin toss. This is getting to be where it's not a coin toss anymore, that this is just the Roberts modus operandi, which is very deeply concerning to me on a number of levels. So for those of you who don't know the case where this came down, there was a Louisiana law that regulated abortion clinics. And basically, since Louisiana only has one major abortion clinic, that it would have effectively made abortion illegal, at least in certain ways. And the, the nature of this law was it made it to where any abortion clinic that was going to be operating, they could only use a doctor that has admitting privilege, privileges to a local hospital, and the hospital had to be within a certain radius of the clinic that was operating. Now, this actually does make a good bit of sense, because if you are concerned about not just abortion, but any kind of medical procedure taking place in a medical facility— it makes sense that other medical centers, and, and this is not just true for abortions, this happens also with outpatient procedures that do not take place in a hospital, that if a doctor is going to perform some kind of surgery, he also needs to have admitting privileges, so in case something does go south, there's something that, that happens to where the operation doesn't go the way that it's normally supposed to, that that doctor needs to be able to go ahead and admit that patient automatically into a hospital to take care of that person because it could save their life. With abortion, however, it's funny to me how they constantly, and by they I'm talking about the left here and the people that are the basically abortion on demand crowd, which is a stance held by only 13% of Americans, despite the fact that it is the Democrats' official platform, that these same people that are for killing as many babies as possible and they always want to anything, anything that would be even somewhat restrictive to abortion or abortion clinics that they want to go ahead and, and get rid of it. They automatically oppose it. It's interesting to me that that same crowd that keeps talking about, oh, well, you know, we have to be concerned about women's health or the people that will tweet out in annoying fashion with the stupid clappy hands thing that abortion is health care, that kind of thing. Planned Parenthood does this on a regular basis. That those same people that will make those statements oppose regulations like this that would make abortion safer. Remember the old tagline that really doesn't get used anymore, but the abortion ad, uh, advocates, those people's mantra used to be, well, we want abortions to be safe, legal, and rare. Well, they dropped rare a long time ago. They're, they're not even pretending to want to limit abortions. That pretty much ended, well, I mean, it ended before this, but that even the facade of wanting abortions to be rare pretty much went away when Planned Parenthood started the Shout Your Abortion campaign. And then the safe kind of went by the wayside, too. It seems like when it comes to the left and abortion, the only consistent stance that they have is they want it legal. They want to be able to kill their, their babies on command. That seems to be the only driving consistency behind the movement. So legal is really the only thing they seem concerned about, because if you were concerned about women's safety, you would think that they would want the doctor to have admit, uh, admitting privileges and to be able to go ahead and admit a patient 
into a hospital that would need to be within a certain radius, a, a certain distance from the hospital. And with the Louisiana law, it wasn't like it had to be two centimeters away or that it had to be done specifically in a hospital. It, it wasn't that level of unreasonable. But the fact that this was a, a very, very mild, it doesn't even in any way address when a abortion can take place. So it doesn't even limit like the time. It's, it's not saying like just not in the third trimester or any of that. All it says was that these medical facilities have to be within a certain distance and have a doctor that can admit patients to that hospital should something go south. But they don't want that because that might limit, that, that might mean less dead babies, ergo they are against it. That seems to be the only principle that they care about now. And it's interesting because in 2016, there was virtually an identical case in Texas. Texas had a law that was very, very similar. And in that same case, when the Supreme Court did hear it, because it made it up to the Supreme Court too, the fascinating thing about this is that Justice Roberts, weirdly enough, voted on the other side. It was really, really strange, but now Justice Roberts is actually arguing with Justice Roberts. Like, it's one thing for Justice Roberts to argue with Kavanaugh or Gorsuch or Alito. Those things have become basically, we know that. We know that he's going to disagree with Justice Thomas and, and Kavanaugh. Well, Kavanaugh, not as much. He hasn't been there as long. But definitely Justice Thomas and Alito, at least from time to time. Now we're seeing him argue against himself. It's a really weird situation to be in. But he basically even asserts that he's arguing against himself because he says in his opinion, and, and as Roberts typically does, he does so on very narrow grounds, but he argues in his opinion that this decision that came down is essentially exactly the same. And even though, yes, I did vote on the prevailing, or sorry, the dissenting side last time and got rid of the Texas law by voting with the conservative justices, I'm voting with the liberal justices this time because of stare decisis. Now, stare decisis, the actual translation is that is as it stands or it, no, it, it's as it has been decided. So a little rusty on my Latin here. I'm not a lawyer. Uh, <laughs> it means it has been decided. And so basically, and this is what Justice Thomas has argued for years and years and years, that stare decisis is basically meaningless because everybody rules exactly the way that they want to rule regardless. Stare decisis is just a cloak that people use as a disguise to essentially try to uh, tell people that stare decisis matters because whenever somebody thinks that a decision was wrongly decided, then they'll go ahead with that. But if they believe the decision is rightly decided, they'll just cloak themselves in, oh, it's stare decisis, that's the reason, that's the rationale for me deciding the way that it did. And so really stare decisis is completely meaningless in the legal sense because if if we were to just adopt the stare decisis doctrine, then we would still be under Brown v. Board of Education and Plessy v. Fer Ferguson. Like uh, all of those <laughs> would, would continue to be the law of the land if that were the case. But it's not. What this boils down to is John Roberts didn't want to have a fight over abortion and he wanted to be less contradictory, or sorry, not less contradictory. He already is contradictory by doing this. Uh, he wanted to be less controversial and so what he did was he said, okay, this time I'm just going to go with stare decisis has been decided, therefore I'm not going to change it. It's a really, really dumb ruling. But the thing about John Roberts is he will do absolutely anything to protect the public perception of the court. He thinks that the most important thing that he can do as chief justice is to try to get other people to believe that the courts are impartial which is ridiculous on a number of levels because A, his behavior has not made the court less controversial in any way, and B, and I think that this is even more important, he has a bad idea of what public perception actually is. Because he is in Washington and surrounded by the Washington bubble, he seems to think that what the American population's opinion actually is, is whatever the Washington Post op-ed page says. So whatever the opinion column in the Washington Post says that day, that is, in his mind, the opinion of the American people, because that's the bubble that he lives in. But it's simply not true. And you can see this in his decisions over the past few years, that he basically will do anything to keep the media from saying that the court was wrong. That seems to be his biggest fear, and because of that, he rules in that one particular way. But... 
I understand. I genuinely do. I understand the desire to protect the integrity of the court. The public faith in the court is something that is worthy of protection. I'm not saying that that in itself is wrong. What is wrong is when you start allowing that to influence your legal opinion. Your legal opinion, your job as a justice of the Supreme Court is to say, is it constitutional? Is it not constitutional? Not constitutional. Don't care what people think. In fact, the Supreme Court, the reason that they have lifetime appointments is because that was a strategy to keep public opinion from influencing the court. The founders believed that it would be a bad thing for public opinion to influence the court. Because if that happens, and unfortunately this is the situation we now find ourselves in, basically what the Supreme Court would become is merely a roundabout way for direct democracy. If we wanted public opinion influencing these kinds of decisions, we wouldn't need a Supreme Court. We would just vote on everything. Who do you think is right in this court case? Okay, 50% plus one of the American people believe it should be this way, ergo, that's what we should do. We saw it earlier in the decision on trans rights, that there is a public perception of what the right thing to do is. There is a public perception that the civil rights, at least by some, again, mostly the people that run the opinion column on in the Washington Post, but certainly not the average American, that believe that this is the way things ought to be, therefore the Supreme Court is going to rule this way. It's incorrect. It defies the very nature of what the Supreme Court ought to be. A perfect example is how Justice Antonin Scalia ruled on the burning the flag uh, case. At that time especially, now unfortunately it might not be this way, but at that time the vast majority of the American population and Justice Scalia himself would say that it's wrong to burn the flag, that that's a very bad, bad thing to do. And I think that they would be right, but it was still the right thing to do as a justice of the Supreme Court to rule that it was not the wrong thing to do, that that is protected by free speech, because again, your job as a justice of the Supreme Court is to say, okay, constitutional, unconstitutional, and let the chips fall where they may. That's what you're supposed to do. What this means going forward and what it means for the future. Basically what this means, this decision, what it shows is that the chances of this court and by that I don't mean the Supreme Court, I mean the current makeup of the Supreme Court, the nine justices that currently sit in those seats. The odds of this Supreme Court deciding that Roe versus Wade should be overturned is approximately 0.0. There is no chance that this court is going to overturn it because Justice Roberts would not dare do anything that controversial. As long as he is the one that is going to be making those decisions, he is not going to do something that... Because think about this. The whole idea behind the doctrine of stare decisis, in other words, court precedent being important, is that the older the precedent is, the harder it should be to overturn. Why? Because that means there is more law that has happened in the time since then that rests upon that former decision by the court. So in other words, the older it is, the higher threshold there should be to overturn it. John Roberts took a very benign Louisiana law that barely regulated or curtailed abortion, at least in the, the realm of legal theory, maybe not necessarily in practicality or actuality, but certainly in the realm of political theory, that he looked at that and decided to fall back on stare decisis and argue with himself on a precedent from four years ago. This is an ancient history. This didn't happen in the 1920s. This is court precedent from 2016. A case that he sat on and argued for the opposite side. If John Roberts cannot even stay consistent from four years ago to overturn an abortion regulation that has had presumably very little law based on it happen in that short four-year period, there is zero chance that he is ever going to overturn Roe v. Wade. Everyone was terrified that Justice Kavanaugh, by getting confirmed, because I'm old enough to remember when this was the left's argument, that the second that Brett Kavanaugh is confirmed, that is the end of abortion. 
And of course, they went to other radical extremes and, and ridiculous arguments saying that with Kavanaugh, we're going to have abortion pills. They were literally wearing outfits from The Handmaid's Tale, basically saying that women will become slaves and property by Kavanaugh being confirmed. And the Supreme Court can't even curtail abortion even just a little bit by a, a very slim legal standard. Not even undoing a court decision that happened literally four years in the past with most of the same judges sitting on it. Do you really think there's any chance that this court is going to overturn Roe v. Wade? So now they have this fancy new technology where you click on one of these boxes and it takes you to another one of my videos. Hopefully it works a lot better than the Obamacare website or the DNC's Iowa caucus app. Gotta love that big government central planning.